Hello everyone, hello, uh, welcome, welcome to the second episode of Spring Stargazing from your window. My name is Paul and I am the assistant planetarium producer at We The Curious. And uh, just a bit of a recap for those of you who didn't catch our first episode, the whole idea of this series of live streams is that we will be showing you the basics of stargazing. So uh, if, if you look at the sky and you see all these dots in the sky and you think, where do I start? It's just a load of dots. This is for you. This is the basic stuff, where to start stargazing, what you can find tonight and over the next few weeks, hopefully. And to do this, I'm going to be using a bit of free software called Stellarium and Stellarium is absolutely free it's at like having a planetarium on your computer you can download it for free from Stellarium.org anyone can download it it's also an app but you've got to pay uh, extra for a lot of the stuff on the app but it's all free on your computer so if you can't see anything out your window tonight if you're facing the wrong way it's too cloudy it's too bright that's all right Download Stellarium and you can find all this stuff on your computer. It's great. Well, let's talk a little bit about what we saw last week. Uh, well, last week, on Tuesday it was. And we talked a little bit about um, the saucepan. That's right. We used Stellarium to find the saucepan or the plough, you might know it as. And we also used Stellarium to find the North Star. And we talked a little bit about the Lyrids Meteor Shower which is visible at this time of year. In fact, it reached its peak on Wednesday morning, just after midnight. Now, I don't know about you, but I went out to try and see some shooting stars and I didn't see any. It was too bright where I was. It was too much light pollution and uh, I just didn't have any luck at all. But maybe you did. If you managed to see some shooting stars, do let me know in the comments. And uh, even though that meteor shower is past its peak. It's still going on right now. So if you're very lucky, uh, tonight and tomorrow night and maybe over the weekend, you might see the odd shooting star here and there in the sky. Let me know if you do. Now we also talked a little bit about the Starlink satellites. Starlink satellites are Elon Musk's satellites from the company SpaceX. And he sent them up into space to bring broadband to places that don't normally get broadband apparently. And uh, you can see them quite uh, quite easily at the moment, apparently. I say that, but again, I went out and I didn't see any. I did see some satellites, which I got very excited about, but they were going in a completely different direction to the direction the Starlink satellites were going to go. So I didn't see any Starlink satellites either. But if you did, again, let me know. Apparently, some of, sometimes they look like a train of them, like a few dots in a row going across the sky in a line. So if you saw anything like that, do let me know. And, of course, throughout this broadcast, if you've got any questions, let me know as well uh, through the Facebook comments. I'll do my very best to answer them. And if I don't manage it, uh, then I'll try and answer them after the broadcast through the comments. Actually, let's just check on Facebook, just to check I am actually reaching you. If uh, let's, uh, Oh, yes, here we go. People are commenting. Hello everybody, hello Charlotte, hello Zoe, hello Mia, hello Maria, hello Meg, hello to you all, fantastic. At least someone's, uh, someone's seeing this, that's great. Okay, so let's go back to do, 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 Stellarium. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we are going to go into the night time. So, you might I, you might remember last time I uh, I, I spoke some of the uh, the keyboard shortcuts I was using and I explained a bit about what I was doing on Stellarium. This isn't going to be a, like a comprehensive guide to Stellarium, but I'll try and show you what I'm doing as I do it. So we'll bring the cursor over to the left, and we'll click on the clock on this little menu that appears. And you can see it's five past eleven at the moment. So we'll try and go a little bit later. Let's go up to do, 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 do. six, seven, eight, nine, 
and we'll go up to about half past nine again, just like we did on Tuesday. Do, do, do. There we go. Perfect. That's what we want. It's got a lovely clear sky. It was a little bit cloudy last night when I went out. Not too cloudy, but uh, the light pollution was mostly the problem. Again, I did say that when you're looking for stuff like the saucepan, the light pollution can be your friend. It drowns out those less bright, more distant stars. So sometimes shapes like in the stars like the saucepan really stand out. Let's turn around and try and find that saucepan. So imagine we're looking at our window. We're giving our eyes time to adjust. We have a good look in the sky. If we look up. There we go. I've spotted the saucepan. I don't know if anybody else has. Let me show it to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is our saucepan. Now, this isn't a constellation. We talked on Tuesday about how the constellation constellations are the official patterns in the stars recognized by the International Astronomical Union. But the saucepan's not one of them. It's just a handy little shape, and we call these handy little shapes asterisms. They're the unofficial patterns in the stars. And we use this asterism, the saucepan, to find the North Star. So if we go from the two pointer stars on the end of the pan here, and we follow where they're going from the top of the pan, one, two, three, four, five, and we found the North Star again. Here we go, Polaris, the North Star. Now, there's a reason the saucepan isn't a constellation, and that's because it's part of a much bigger shape. There is a constellation. Let me show you what I mean. So I want you to use your imaginations a little bit here. I want you to imagine the handle of the saucepan is a tail. And the pan is a belly. Now, coming out the back of the belly, we've got a long leg, two pointy little claws. That's our back leg. Coming out the front, we've got another long leg, two pointy little claws here. So that's our front leg. And then coming out the front of the pan here, look at this. We've got a beady little eye, another beady little eye, and a little nose. So can you picture this huge triangle head sticking out here? Now, you've really got to use your imagination here. I think that looks like a rat myself, an upside-down rat, or a squashed monkey, perhaps. But, apparently, it's supposed to be a bear. A bear called Ursa Major. That's Latin, that is. That's your actual Latin, that is. Major means great, and Ursa means bear. And, uh, yeah, this is the Great Bear. We found a constellation. Now, the saucepan's the easiest part to find of the Great Bear because that's the brightest part. But even if there's a little bit of light pollution around you, if you give your eyes time to adjust, you should have no trouble seeing the legs. There's a back leg, front leg, and his pointy little head. Now, you remember we talked about the North Star as well, the North Star. Now, this is a lot harder to find. I might have a bit of trouble here myself. Let's see if I can do it. So we've got the North Star here, Polaris. This is the tip of the tail of another constellation. And as you can see, this constellation's a lot fainter. The North Star's pretty bright and easy to spot. But then we've got a little tail coming down here. And a little square here, a little rectangle. Ooh! Can you see a little satellite there? Look at that. There's a little satellite going there. Ooh. NORAD. So that's an American defense satellite. Very interesting. There we go. That's something to look out for tonight, about half nine, if you're looking for Ursa Minor, the little bear. I've given it away. That's what we're looking at here. This is Ursa Minor. That's the tail. That's the body of the little bear. I think it looks like a computer mouse. But apparently... It is a little bear. Let me show you what they're supposed to look like. If I just move the sky down, actually. 
click on that, press C. There we go, that's what we want. So that's the outline of Ursa Major the Great Bear, Ursa Minor the Little Bear. And if you don't find Ursa Minor tonight, don't worry, because it is quite faint. So uh, you might not find it. You might if you're lucky, though. It depends how much light's around you. But you should have a good shot of seeing Ursa Major. Let's get the, the labels up. I'm going to press V for the labels. By the way, I pressed C to get the constellation lines up. And now I'm going to press R to get the artwork up. There we go. Lovely. Two lovely bears. Ooh. Spun them around for you there. Didn't mean to do that. Ah, that's better. Now I want to talk a little bit about the mythology of the bears because it's something I find really, really interesting. Now, um, you may remember on Tuesday I mentioned that uh, a lot of the 88 official constellations come from the Greek constellations, the constellations recorded by people like Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD. And uh, uh, we still use a lot of the Greek myths, the ancient Greek myths. And there's a lovely little story associated with the Bears, an ancient Greek myth. And it's a story of a woman named Callisto. And Callisto was a wood nymph, a magical lady who lived in the forest. And she fell in love with Zeus, king of the gods. And Zeus, king of the gods, fathered a child with Callisto, the wood nymph. And, uh, well, when the wife of Zeus, Hera, queen of the Greek gods, found out about this, she wasn't too happy. And so... She turned Callisto into a bear as punishment. And Callisto spent many years wandering the forest in the form of a bear. Until one day she came across a hunter. And this hunter saw this great big bear coming towards him. And he raised his bow and arrow. And he got ready to let loose an arrow, ready to strike down this bear. Now sadly, this hunter was the son of Callisto who had grown to manhood during the time his mother had spent as a bear. And of course, he didn't recognise his mother. She was a bear. You wouldn't, would you? Well, Callisto prayed to Zeus, please save me. Save me and save my son. Now, you'd think the logical thing to do would be for Zeus to turn Callisto back into a human, or at least into a wood nymph. But that was too easy for Zeus. What he did instead was he turned the son into a bear as well. And then, for reasons known only to himself, he picked them both up, swung them over his head by the tail, and threw them into the sky, where they remain to this day. And which is why they have these great big long stretch tails there. So mother and son are together forever. Hera, <coughs> pardon me, Hera, the queen though, she wanted to stick the boot in a bit more. So she asked Poseidon, the king of the sea, to um, to make sure that the bears never bathed in his waters. And this is why, according to the ancient Greek myth, you never see these constellations dip below the horizon, or at least in the northern hemisphere you don't anyway. Well, there's actually a, a reason for this beyond mythology. Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are circumpolar constellations, and all this means is that they are dead close to the North Star. So you notice there's the North Star, and Ursa Minor, well, it's, uh, it's stretching out from the North Star, and Ursa Major is also really close. So all year round, they go round and round. Oh, I've made Draco appear. Oh, there we go. Bonus constellation for you there. Anyway, the two bears, they go round and round and round and round and round, and they never dip below the horizon. Let's go back up. Well, Draco, by the way, I, I'm quite fond of Draco. It's a bit of a tricky one to see, but you can see it's coiling itself around the North Star, around Ursa Minor as well. And uh, give it a go. See if you can see it. But don't worry too much if you can't. Let's concentrate on these bears for now, though. Because I don't want to give you the idea... <coughs> pardon me. I don't want to give you the idea that it's just ancient Greek myths associated with these constellations because as you might imagine all kinds of people all kinds of cultures and civilizations throughout time have looked at these same stars and they've all got their own constellations and their own stories 
And something I find very interesting is there's a lot of Native American people who've got who also see a bear when they look at Ursa Major. And I find this incredibly interesting because, you know, you'd think, oh, North America, uh, Greece, they're nowhere near each other. And yet these two separate people saw a bear when they looked at the sky. Now, some people think this goes back thousands of thousands of years, about 15,000 years to when uh, the continents were actually joined together. Russia and um, Russia and America were joined by a land bridge um, all that time ago, a long time ago. And so people went back and forth between the two continents with ease. And uh, so maybe these stories of a bear in the sky grew out of a common myth from that time where all these people were going back and forth. And then the sea, seas rose and the land bridge disappeared under the sea and the two continents were separated for thousands of years. But these stories about bears remained. I find that really, really interesting. But I want to tell you another story now. Now, this is a story told by the um, Mi'kmaq. And the Mi'kmaq are a First Nations people indigenous to parts of Canada and North America. And theirs is a culture based on oral narratives. They pass their stories down from generation to generation. And they use these stories for teaching. And uh, this is one of those stories that I'm about to tell now. And there are other, other people, other First Nations people, who've got similar stories. But the one I'm going to tell you is the Mi'kmaq story. And it was passed on to me by a man called Roger Lewis, who's the curator of Mi'kmaq Cultural Heritage and Research at the Nova Scotia Museum. He very kindly passed this story on to me. So I'm gonna pass it on to you now. So this story is the story of Muin. And Muin is the great bear, Ursa Major. And, in, and Muin comes out of her den every March in the spring, and she begins her journey across the sky. Now she is noticed by a bird, a bird called Chickadee. And Chickadee wants to hunt the bear, but Chickadee is very small. And so Chickadee calls in some help. He calls in his fellow birds to help him hunt this great bear. And I'm gonna see if I can show you a picture of this great bear now, or of these birds rather. So I'm just gonna press a few buttons. Here we go. And if I click on this here, there we go. Now you should be seeing the artwork that we use in the We the Curious Planetarium Dome when we're telling this story. So we've got Muin, the great bear, and we have seven birds. Six birds have joined Chickadee, making seven birds in total, chasing this bear across the sky. The closest to Muin is Robin, and I'm going to go through them in order. Behind Robin is Chickadee. Behind Chickadee is Grey Jay. And you can see these three birds form the tail of the bear, what we think of normally as the tail of the bear, or the saucepan handle, if you were. But then there are four more birds as well that aren't traditionally part of Ursa Major in our culture. You've got uh, behind Grey Jay, you've got Pigeon. Behind Pigeon, you've got Blue Jay. Behind Blue Jay, you have Barred Owl. And behind Barred Owl, you have Sawhet Owl. And these seven birds are chasing the bear throughout the sky. And they're chasing the bear throughout the whole year because they're hunting the bear. They want to eat the bear for a great feast. Let me uh, just uh, go back to Stellarium now. Let me just change that over. There we go. Now, imagine these seven birds chasing the bear throughout the year. And I'm going to show you how that works because by the time we get to the autumn, by the time we get to, say... October. Something rather interesting has happened and I'm going to show you this with Stellarium by going forward in time. You can see the month is April there. Let's move forward through time. Look at that. You can see the bear moving through the sky throughout the year. It's the same time, quarter to ten, but the bear moves through the sky and the birds chase him and now we're on October. And look at this. At this point, autumn's beginning, it's October, we've still got Robin, Chickadee, Grey Jay, 
but the four other birds had dipped below the horizon. They're tired, they've given up the chase, leaving only the three birds that are in the lead. Well, during the autumn, Robin gets close enough to shoot the great bear Muin with his bow and arrow. And uh, he manages to strike the bear. And so he comes to prepare the bear for the feast. And in doing so, he's covered in the blood of the bear. And so he goes to the maple tree and he sits on the maple tree and tries to shake the blood off. And all the blood spatters over all the leaves in the trees. And this is the story of why the leaves turn red in the autumn. As for Robin, he's still got a little bit of red on his chest. And Chickadee says to him, well, from now on, that's how you will be known. You will be Robin Redbreast. They prepare the feast together throughout the winter. And then along comes Grey Jay at the end. He's a little bit behind. He hasn't really joined in with preparing the feast. But Chickadee and Robin are kind. They let him join in anyway. And from that day forth, Grey Jay never hunted again. It preferred to just follow other hunters and eat the meat of their hunt. And that is why the Mi'kmaq refer to Grey Jay as he who comes in at the last moment. But Robin and Chickadee were happy to share and they had this great feast together. And, uh, well, then spring came once again. The spirit of Muin entered another she-bear who came out of its den and the whole cycle starts all over again. So I'm really, really fond of that story and I just find it so interesting that you've got two completely different cultures who both see a bear there. But give it a go yourself. Have a look for Ursa Major tonight. Find the saucepan. See if you can find the rest of the bear. And then have a look for the North Star. Don't worry if you can't, but have a go. See if you can find Ursa Minor too. Well, I think that's enough of me rabbiting on for now. Let's see if we've got any questions for people on Facebook. Let me just go back to Facebook. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Oh, brilliant. Thomas Gethin and Gwenon. They saw the SpaceX Starlink earlier in the week. That's fantastic. I'm really pleased about that. Because like I said, I missed it myself. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Um, Diane missing our beloved planetarium, Diane Whitcomb. So had to make do with the sky the other night. Spotted the plough, though. Well done, Diane. That's pretty good. That's a great star. I always get really excited when I find the plough, still. Um, oh, this is interesting. Thank you for the presentation, Susan Toomey. So Hercules rise under Lyra and Booties. Oh, fantastic. Um, oh, I'll have to show you Booties and Lyra at some point. Yeah, they're, they're very exciting. And Hercules as well. Well, this is marvellous. Do keep your questions coming. In fact, why don't I show you Booties now? Let me go back to Stellarium and I'll show you Booties now because uh, he's another one of my favourites. I hope you're all seeing this, by the way, because on my Facebook uh, page, I've got my first screen and a little blue wheel. So uh, do let me know if you're seeing everything I'm showing you. I, I, hope, I hope so. Let's uh, go back to Stellarium. Because I want to show you booties. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the clock. And let's go back to April. There we go. So we're back to tonight. And we're going to go back up to Ursa Major. And I wonder if I click on that. That's the tip of the tail. I'm going to press spacebar to center it. Woo! There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, I've made another one appear there. <laughs> this is a very strange constellation. I'm going to say don't bother looking for this one because it's very faint. And it's supposed to be a bit of hair. When it's drawn on the dome in our planetarium, it uh, it looks like a jellyfish, actually. And everyone thinks there's a jellyfish constellation, which would actually be a lot more interesting than just a bit of hair. Oh, well. I accidentally pressed on that one. But what I really want to show you is the tail of the bear. Now, if you're out in the nighttime sky and you find the saucepan in the bear, follow the tail around. Follow it down, 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 down until you get to this really bright star here. And this is Arcturus. And we've already seen this star today because 
it is barred out from our Mi'kmaq story. But yeah, this is Arcturus. It's a very bright star. And as you can see, it is the belt buckle of Booties, the herdsman. I always think Booties looks like an ice cream cone. Some people think he looks like a bit of a cowboy because they see that's his belt buckle there. You've got the holster on his belt there and they see another little holster there. But I always see an ice cream myself. But Booties is supposed to be the herdsman and his job is to herd the two bears through the sky. Um, if you don't find Booties tonight, don't worry too much because uh, you, you will see Arcturus because it's quite a bright star. So that in itself is quite exciting. Let's head back to Facebook, see if there are any more questions for me. Do, do, do. I'm going to scroll down. What time will be the best time to view the stars tonight? James has asked. Uh, well, um, I think um, the later you can, the better. Don't stay up too late. Uh, because, um, you know, you don't want to stay up too past your bedtime. But uh, yeah, as late as you can, um, so the stars get higher in the sky. And it's more about where you're viewing it from. Because uh, the best place I could go last night, I used my sort of designated time of exercise last night to go out into a little field that's quite close to my house. And, um, and I, I could see the brighter stuff, like the bear and Arcturus, uh, but I couldn't actually see much else and that's because there was so much light around me so much light pollution So James to answer your question. It's uh, as long as it's night time. You're okay, but it's more about where you are than um, when you are Now um, oh, let's have a look um, the que uh, We had a question about how do we shrink the sc shrink the screen on Stellarium? I struggled with that one Mickey has asked me that one and Vicky and Mia have been asking it now, this took me ages to figure out, right? So don't feel too bad. But uh, when I've got other windows open, but I've got Stellarium open, because right now I've got Facebook open, I've got Stellarium open, I've got my streaming software open. But of course, Stellarium takes up your whole screen, doesn't it? So if you want to get out of that and get to the other screens, you can't really minimize it. What you need to press is Alt and Tab, and that'll take you to one of your other windows. So I hope that helps you. Vicky and Mia. Uh, apparently Susan has told me that you can see me. That's fantastic. You can see what I'm showing you. That's uh, that's really good. Fantastic. Um, oh, and my nephew, Jake, saw a, uh, saw a satellite. I saw Sputnik 1 from Jake. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done, Jake. Excellent. Hello to you as well. Right, let's have a look. Oh, crikey, look at the time. It's 11.29. I think it's time for me to wrap up now. If you've got any more questions at all, do put them in the comments and I'll see if I can get to them. But um, what I will say, though, is tonight, have a little look for the saucepan. See if you can find Ursa Major. See if you can find Ursa Minor. Don't worry too much if you can't. And have a look for Arcturus and Booties as well. And do let me know next week if you find them. We're planning on uh, doing another one of these on Tuesday if there's a demand for it. And I hope so because I really enjoy doing them. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, well, enjoy yourself stargazing and hopefully I shall see you next week. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>